what you're doing and other people. Uh, it, it's really quite amazing. Now, there was another topic in there that I just looked at the title. Um, coaches want more than just problem solvers. Let's see where that one goes. And then I'll, we'll see where everybody else here is on that. Go ahead, Craig. Yeah, so concept of, of this one um, is a, a little bit of a frustration with everyone being like, oh, he's such a great problem solver. Um, while, while admirable, I see and understand the aim, I think we can do a lot better than that, especially if we're looking for offensemen. Um, you want offensemen that are creating problems. They're creating questions for the defense to answer, which – either direction that they choose you have the answer to um so you're putting people in awkward spots we, we all know when you start having to make selections and you're teeter-totter between two options the advantage goes to your opponent so similar idea of like how do we create issues um one of the examples i did was a forward skating uh up towards the blue line while being covered by a defenseman. So that defenseman has to make the decision of, do I chase out? Do I stay home by the net? And at that point, there needs to be maybe some communication, especially in the playoffs when it's a loud building. You know, that's very difficult. So now we're understanding like, okay, this was my responsibility. You're challenging the opposition to know what is your true zone of coverage and just being able to create awkward situations. And I always think that the best concept or best way to kind of put this uh, through to uh, a player is you have to constantly be asking questions of the defense that they need to be answering and they need to be communicating with their teammates and then you can also see it on the defensive side um, where it's more so about problem prevention rather than problem solving like a defenseman that's constantly having to chip pucks out off the glass probably has an issue further up the chain rather than I hit really good at clearing the net front and getting pucks out when it's just immediately coming right back. Um, like how do you actually prevent or for another example of problem prevention is like, you're, you're almost sitting on a player. So they never get the puck. So the play has to go to a, a more gummed up area, an area that's got more traffic. Um, I also like to, to call them like the force defender, like you're forcing the play where you want it to go. Um, while not really, screaming in your face but if you're on your you know the team of someone who's really good at that you understand the value of bad timing by the opposition where they're making plays when they don't want to they're putting pucks into areas where they don't want it to be where it's more of an advantage for you you and your teammates um and half the time you can be able to steer the play right into your teammates where they can have the the opportunity to create the turnovers and get the glory um so it's something that I notice, but it's taken a long time to get there. And I don't think the average viewer is looking for these types of players. It's almost like the, the talent that whispers. Um, so I'm always looking for players that kind of have those capabilities, those things that don't really scream at you. Uh, but you add it up over time. It makes a massive difference to, to what goes into winning. And uh, so simplified that all the way down to coaches want more than just problem solvers. So more problem preventers and problem creators. I'm going to. Uh, take this one. Uh, I don't know whether it's up a level or down a level here, but um, what I hear you saying, and I'm I'm simplifying this to the real situation I've experienced in the past. A coach teaching breakout teaches the wheel, and that is their breakout. And of course, the problem with that is everybody can read it, and it gets overloaded, and the puck's going to turn over because there's so many bodies by the time they get to the other side. That's the reality. The tools the player needs are varieties of decisions and choices that could be made given whatever they do. And over the years, um, Lindstrom was asked, and a number of coaches have been asked, asked players, but what's your breakout? And Lindstrom said, it's whatever the situation dictates. So there is no specific breakout, but 
I wonder if that relates to what you're saying here is, are we coaching players how to make decisions on the ice by giving them a variety of tools to see and recognize the situation? Or are we letting them down? It's one thing to pick players that can already do that. But at our level, we're trying to pick players that will learn that and be better learning that. So I'm not sure if that makes sense or not, Greg, but I'm going to just leave that with you because <laughs> it's a problem we're facing. Um, we're trying to provide more tools, but every tool relates to above the shoulders and having the skill to see and think and decision make. Well, the other piece of that is when you go to off-season training, how many players actually train that, right? Everyone's like, the game's 90% mental, but how often do we train the mental side of the game compared to just hitting the, the weight room, you know, going in conditioning? Well, well, yes, that is very important. You've got it. I always relate to like the computer. You have to upgrade the hardware so it can, you know, actually functionally handle the software instructions. But at the same point, a lot of times the software and the brain and the thinking is more important to reaching that next level. Um, like for, for me with my kids at high school level, I'm always trying to challenge myself to get them to a point where the issue is execution. I find that too many times we see players that they do like the skills training where it's just them going around a cone and they can pull off all these technical skills but they don't know the timing of when to use it um, and trying to get to a point where it's a failing in the incapability of their technical abilities rather than their tactical knowledge and ability to apply the when and where of playing the game or applying the, whatever the solution is if you're going to get a little more uh, book savvy rather than practical. So challenging ourselves as coaches to find ways and situations to almost get to the point where, okay, I do need to do these technical uh, drills to pick up the skills that allow them to execute tactically. I know it's going to be much different at a younger age group than what I have, but that's kind of my goal currently. Yeah. I'm going to ask Tom if he would comment. Um, Tom uh, has a concept of let the game teach. And I think what the, one of the problems is we overcoach, we overtell, we overdirect. And uh, so, Tom, in relation to that, I wonder if you could elaborate it a bit because you sort of know where we're all coming from. Sure, I'll give it a whirl, but I want to show one thing before because this is amazing me here. <laughs> 